were chatting last year around this time, Jim, I remember because at that time everyone was busy buying gold as they will be this week because it's very auspicious. It's festival season here in India. And uh, when we were speaking last year, you had warned that after the third time the Fed would hike rates, the world would go into a deep recession. And I've been waiting a year to ask you <laughs> what is preventing the world from slipping into that recession because markets seem to be bouncing right back up each and every time. Well, that's very strange. Marcus, most where I am are going down. I wish I were there. I should be with you, Appa. Uh, American markets down, Japan, every, China. I thought everybody was down. Uh, so is, is this then, is this only going to get worse from here on? Do you feel this is the beginning of an impending recession, the worst ever, like it's been predicted by some? Well, before this is over, yes, it's going to be the worst in my lifetime. In 2008, we had a problem because of too much debt. Uh, but since 2009, the debt everywhere, everywhere has skyrocketed. So the next problem has to be the worst in my lifetime because the debt has gotten so, so, so much worse. But having said that, there's a huge amount of pessimism around right now. And normally when there's a lot of pessimism, something happens and people get happy for a short time. I don't know, this is not a prediction, but if there were peace in Ukraine, oh my gosh, the pessimism would disappear and stocks would go up. So something is probably going to happen. We're probably going to have one last rally, but that will be it, Appa. That Then we're coming to the end of the line. Be worried. Watch business okay. today. <laughs> so, no, this, this is why I wanted to talk to you, Jim, because I think that for a lot of... Uh, investors that are coming off a really good run any glimmer of hope is an opportunity to buy right because all this while they've been thinking that markets in the long term are going to continue to go up etc etc so now does one look for an exit at this time well i have not started selling i have a few shorts but i have not started selling short yet but yes many people especially after a decline like this look for a reason to be optimistic. Let me remind you, Apus, there have been many times in history when stocks have done nothing for a long period of time or even declined for a long period of time. Stocks don't always have to go up. Write it down. Stocks do not have to go up all the time. We have had many long bear markets and we will, we're going to have another one now, soon. Um Jim, what are you still long on then? Let's talk, let's talk commodities. Uh, let's start with your favorite, of course, silver, gold. Where are you at with some of those investments or trades? Like what, well, are you, what are you uh, tracking or looking at? I own some silver. I mean, I own silver last time I saw you, but I wasn't buying it. Uh, I'm not buying it still. And gold, I'm not buying gold or silver. I'm not selling. Uh, I'm waiting somewhere along the line. I, I hope I'm smart enough to buy more gold, more silver, want to buy more agriculture. Uh, agriculture has been very depressed for a long time. Uh, these are places that I'm looking, things that have been hurt by the epidemic, transportation, tourism, travel. I'm not buying now anywhere, but I'm watching them go down. And the more they go down, the more interesting they get to me. I, I know, I know we're not going to take a boat to New York. We're going to fly to New York again someday. And airlines will be attractive again someday. And I know when we get to New York, we're not going to sleep in the park. We're going to sleep in hotels. So some of these areas that are being very badly hurt by the epidemic usually lead to opportunities. It's interesting you mentioned that because we're seeing uh, airfares, uh, you know, go crazy uh, uh, you know, this season, you know, prices have skyrocketed uh, worldwide, international fares, domestic fares here in India. And we're actually seeing the launch of new airlines here in India as well, despite it being such a cost intensive industry. So clearly there's something brewing there. You, you, do you feel this is this is some kind of, a, you know, revenge consumerism or, or recovery for the last two years? Or is this the beginning of an altogether new trend when it comes to uh, the travel and tourism sector? Well, uh, it, it's both. It's both. It's certainly the recovery. You know, things yeah. are so bad and suddenly people want to travel and there are not many seats, not many employees, not many pilots. So, yes, that's part of what's going on now. But it will lead to 
a, a basic change in the airline industry because people have not been buying a lot of planes in the last few years because of the epidemic for other reasons, but then exacerbated by the, by the epidemic. So who knows, but I expect to find great opportunities in international airlines before this is over. Okay. Um, on gold and silver, on precious metals, uh, Jim, what's the kind of price target you're looking at or the kind of upside? Apple, Apple, please watch BT. I mean, you guys know I am terrible at market timing. I'm the worst market timer in the world. I usually try to let the market tell me if and when I see silver really collapsing more than it is now or gold, I hope I'm smart enough to buy more gold and silver. If I were buying today, I would buy silver. Silver is down much more. Silver is down 70% from its all-time high. Gold is down 15% from its all-time high. Those are rough numbers. But no, I would be buying silver today if I were buying either, but I'm not buying either yet. I'm waiting to see a time when there's real despair, and then I hope I'm smart enough to buy more of both. So what happens to... Uh, you know, currencies at a time like this. Uh, what's your view on the dollar? Uh, we're seeing this a tremendous shakeout and the impact it's having across currencies, especially here in emerging markets. <clears throat> well, I own a lot of U.S. dollars. I told you last time, the reason I, I mean, the U.S. dollar is a terribly flawed currency. America is the largest debtor nation in the history of the world. and <laughs> It's getting worse every day. So now you're going to say, like a good report, you're going to say, why do you own dollars then? What's wrong with you? Uh, I own them because when people, when there's turmoil, people look for a safe haven. People think the U.S. dollar is a safe haven for historic reasons. The U.S. dollar is going to get overpriced. It could turn into a bubble too. I hope I'm smart enough that when that happens to, to sell my U.S. dollars. And your next question should be, well, what are you going to do with the money then? And I don't know yet. I wish I did. I will watch I will watch Apple on BT some more to find out what to do with it. I don't know. You know, theoretically it would you could it would be the Chinese currency because it's so big, but the Chinese currency is a blocked currency. I can't just yeah. go online and buy and sell it like I can the yen or the euro or something. So I don't know where I'm gonna put my money. Mm, okay. And in terms of Timeline. So we're looking at, I, you know, you've, you've been uh, speaking about it when you were saying the worst uh, bear run. Are we looking at the end of the year? Is it it's really around the corner or would you give it six months? Well, this year so far has been one of the worst of uh, the first eight, 10 months of any American, uh, any year in the American stock market. It's been historically, it's been significant that it, how bad it has been. Uh, but as I say, before it's over, I, I expect it to get much, much, much worse. I want to see co some companies go down 60, 70, 80 percent. Some companies will go bankrupt. I'm talking about U.S. companies will go bankrupt. No, this bear market is going to be a mess. You're not old enough to remember bear markets and how bad they can be. They can be really, really devastating and surprising. Wow. So in this shakeout, is it going to be across the board, Jim, or do you see certain pockets that will be worse hit? Tech stocks, um, uh, you know, over leveraged companies, clearly uh, banks. We've been seeing all kinds of uh, uh, reports, you know, at, at some key institutions. Where's the shakeout going to be? No, there will be some probably real assets, whether agriculture or silver or some some things will do well. They always do in bear markets. A few there are always a few sectors that, that do very well. Uh, I don't know what they are yet. I'm certainly optimistic in watching agriculture. I, I mentioned airlines. If they get damaged, the stocks get hurt more and more. You know, the one good thing about all this, it's good for you because it gives you job security. You know, you have, somebody has to report on all this. Somebody has to tell us what's going on. So it's very good for you and BT. It's not good for the rest of us, but it's good for you and BT. Well, I, I do look at India. I do occasionally periodically buy Indian shares. I don't have any now. Uh, because the market was one of the better markets in the last year or two. Uh, but if yeah. India goes down a lot or goes down more than others, 
I'm certainly interested in Indian shares. There are there's some really, really smart Indians, as you know, uh, <laughs> many smart Indians. Uh, you just have to find them. Some of them have moved away, but they're smart Indians in India. And I will be looking for smart Indians and good companies when things get really bad. If you like the video, do like, comment, share, and subscribe.